Welcome to the Big Bear Math channel and our five minute video on integration by U sub. Now because this is such a big topic, we've broken it into three different videos, five minutes each. And over the course of these videos, we're going to cover exactly what you need to know to be successful on the AP exam with regards to integration by U sub. Now I tell you what, AP Calc, there's no doubt it's a bear of a course and it's time for us to go tackle some bears. As I mentioned in the intro, we've basically broken it into three videos that cover the three basic scenarios you're going to see on the AP exam. Uh, the first scenario that we're going to hone in on today is what I call the inner function. We're going to always let u equal the inner function. So in this video, we're going to define by what we mean by inner function and how we're going to go about it. Uh, in the next video is a case where we're going to let u equal the denominator. And in the third video is a scenario where we're going to let u equal the exponent. So we're going to keep it really simple over the course of these next three videos. So the big question that you're staring at right now is how do I know when to use it? You know, um, basically at this stage in your integration uh, career, you've learned how to integrate using the power rule. For instance, finding the antiderivative of x to the nth power with respect to x. And you've probably integrated the basic trig functions, like what's the antiderivative of cosine, etc., etc. So now you're ready to take a big leap. And basically, here's how we're going to summarize it. Chain rule is to derivatives as u sub is to integrals. In other words, if integrals are the inverse of derivatives, then we could say that u sub is the inverse of chain rule. So if you look at a problem and you look at a function, you say, you know what, if I wanted to derive him, I would definitely have to use chain rule. Then to integrate it, we're going to use u sub. All right, here's our first live example. And what you'll notice is if you kind of covered up the integral and pretended that we were going to supposed to drive, you'd say I would need product rule. And as I'm deriving the product rule, I would use the chain rule to drive this term right here. So you see the need for chain rule, which clues us into the fact that as we integrate, we're going to need a u sub. And um, what by definition, we define the x squared plus 1 as the inner function. In other words, it's the function that's being raised to the 1 half power or the square root of it. So here's how we're going to summarize our one big goal today, is to rewrite the entire, emphasis on entire, integral in terms of u. In other words, we want to get rid of all of the x's within the problem. So we said, here's my inner function, and I'm going to let u equal the inner function. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to derive both sides with respect to x. So it's the derivative of u with respect to x equals 2x. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to solve for dx. So you might want to hit the pause button and make a few notes. So I've multiplied the dx to the other side. And now I'm dividing both sides by 2x. So what we've done is we've isolated the dx, okay? And so what we're going to do now is take this expression, du over 2x, and we're going to substitute it in for the dx. Um, and we're also going to take this expression, whoops, I'm going to grab this one right here, u, and that's going to get substituted in for that inner function. So here's what my new integral looks like. It looks like x times the square root of u times du divided by 2x. And the best part about this is that this x right here is going to cancel out with this x. And then I'm going to take, a, I've got a coefficient of 1 half that I'm going to pull out front. So it's the integral of radical, du, or radical u times du. And now you can celebrate because we have successfully rewritten the entire problem in terms of u. In other words, we've gotten rid of all of the x's. And now we're just going to carry out, we're going to use our power rule right now. I'm going to maybe rewrite the integral in terms of a fractional exponent. And my power rule says I'm going to add 1 to the exponent and then divide by that new power. Or in other words, uh, when you divide by 3 halves, you're really multiplying by 2 thirds. So I had the one half, I'm going to multiply by two thirds. Um, we're going to simplify it a little bit here. And it looks like this turns out to be one third. And I'm going to resubstitute back into terms of x. So it would be the quantity x squared plus one raised to the three halves plus c.